Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Lotro with me, Balfellian. And for some reason, there is a peskin just hanging on the stone wall there, um, which just looks really weird. But uh, I think the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to go into the training hall because I'm sure there are many more skills that we can learn and get a bit of diversity going in the things that we use on the baddies. Uh, train skills. Greetings. We have no active skills, we have no passive skills, and we have no gambit skills. Really? Maybe I checked at level 10 and didn't remember them. Um, but uh, as a rule of thumb, I think uh, mostly every two levels you should have skills up until about level 40 ish. Um, some skills on the odd numbers, but mostly uh, every two levels on the even numbers. Um, so yeah, I think today we will discuss virtues, because we got a virtue at the end of uh, the last episode. Uh, so if we click on the, the little Gandalf wizard icon down here, you can see the traits panel. This is where we get all our traits that we can slot and uh, augment our characters to uh, be able to do new things or just have better passive bonuses and stuff like that um, but at the minute all these are greyed out because we don't have those we, are, we haven't unlocked those because we're too noob uh, but we have unlocked three virtue trait slots which are these black squares uh, and we can put a virtue in there so let's see what virtues uh, we've got on here <laughs> we've, we've got one we've got, only got empathy one which is what we got at the last episode but uh, there are a large number of virtues. I'm going to take a random stab in the dark and say there's 20 of them, which may or may not be true. Um, but each of them will give different bonuses. Um, so they will all give three bonuses, and they're all different. Um, so for example, the empathy we just got gives us armor value, uh, which means we take less damage. We got fate, which improves our regeneration of morale and power and our chance to critically hit and we have resistance rating which makes us less likely to get things like wounds and stuff like those wolves we were doing last episode and that warg nearly killed me because he put a wound on me that slowed me which was not very nice um, but each of those one of them will be the primary stat which will give the biggest bonus uh, one of those will be the secondary stat which will give a medium sized bonus and then there'll be a tertiary stat as well, which gives a small bonus. Uh, and they can change between stuff. So I know, for example, on Zeal, the bigger one is the morale one, and then mitigation is the second, and armor is the third. And it's not necessarily, I don't think, the order they're displayed on the tooltips. I think that can change. But uh, yeah, so different different ones might be more appealing to different classes, but as a rule of thumb. I would say go for things that boost mitigations, so like Zeal, it will boost your physical mitigation, your resistance against uh, like swords and bows, like physical damage, um, as opposed to tactical mitigation, which will block spells and that kind of stuff. Um, so f mitigations, resistances, and morale of your virtues, and I, I'd recommend that for all classes, um, but at the end of the day, it's personal preference. Um, so we don't have any race, class or legendary traits at the minute. I will probably cover those once I've got a couple of those each. But uh, Virtue slots will unlock at certain levels. I'm not entirely sure what levels they are, but I can tell you the fourth slot unlocks at level 17. And the fifth one is 23. So you unlock those pretty early, so you can make use of those. Uh, but you can only ever have five virtues, no matter what level you are. Um, and also, if you're playing the game as a free player, so you're going completely free to play, you will only have two virtue slots as a maximum. Uh, and if you want to unlock the other ones, you can either subscribe temporarily and then they'll be permanently unlocked for free as a bonus, or you can individually buy those slots. Uh, but if you do individually buy those slots, you do also need to be the minimum level to use it. So for example, 17 or 23 for those last two there. Um, but once they're unlocked, they're, they're permanently unlocked, so you're not going to lose those, even if you drop your subscription or whatever. Um, but 
uh, to equip the traits, we need to speak to a bard. And conveniently, here's one I found earlier. Uh, Janie Sprigleaf, the Bard of Combe. So if we speak to her and go and manage your what traits, do you need? we again we can see what traits we've got equipped, but now also we can actually choose which ones we want to put in there. Um, so in our virtues list, we've only got empathy and it's rank one. As you can see, there's loads of uh, squares up to rank 16, I think it goes up to. Um, so every time we complete a deed that gives us empathy, it will go up by one, or possibly two if it's a deed that gives two. But uh, we can equip that. And once it's equipped, we will always get that uh, extra stats put on our character. And that's always there. Um, it does cost us a bit of money to slot this, but it's very cheap, so it doesn't really matter. You can see your money down there. Um, and we're going to click confirm just to put those changes in. It will say, do you want to spend the money? We say yes. There's a little jingle. And if we consult Gandalf down there again, we can actually see we've got that traded now. Um, so there's another gentleman here trying to speak to the bard. Um, but yeah, we've, we've finished in comb now. There are technically a few more quests if you uh, are doing the epic quest prologue for the race of man. You might have a few more quests to do around there. But uh, I think I'm going to skip the prologues because they're a bit long and tedious. Uh, and I'll pick up with the epic quest, with the, uh, the proper epic quest, starting with book one. Uh, which will be in Bree when we get there, around about level 15. Uh, and we'll meet some of uh, the characters from the books, specifically Aragorn, who we'll be meeting quite early on, um, as well as Gandalf, we'll see pretty early. Uh, we did briefly meet uh, Frodo and Co. as a hobbit in our little uh, starting quest, and of course we will see with them again at some point. But for now, we're just minding our own business. We're walking into saddle. Sadly not riding into saddle. Because Middle Earth is a very big place and it does take a while to run around. So those horses will really help. And I don't have a stance on. Turn that on. There we go. Angry Hobbit. And we'll arrive in saddle and there's going to be loads of quest rings to pick up. Uh, saddle will get you quite a few levels if you just grab everything. Uh, so we had one quest to, to go to Saddle earlier, which we can hand into this guy. And he's going to give me three more. Crikey. So what do we got? We got... Would you do something we got for an me? orange quest, which means that's a bit above us. That's level 14 compared to our level 11. So we've got to kill goblins in the marshes. Uh, Could I speak with you a moment? Kill the goblin chieftains in the marshes. Stay a moment. And speak to Gammy Boggs, who has a really silly sounding name. Could uh, I speak with you a moment? Defeat Nika Breakers in the marshes. So again, as you can probably tell, the marshes, the Midgewater marshes, are slightly above our level because all the quests that we've got there are orange. Um, so if you tend to find that your quests do tend to be on the orange and red side of things in a particular area, that probably means you should avoid it for a level or two. Unless you're feeling brave, in which case go for it. Um, would you do something for me? No, I would not do something for you. Uh, kill ten balls, okay. Easy enough. Um, Hobbit and his dog. Might I trouble you for some help? He wants to talk to somebody. Again, Staddle has a bit of a crafting facility, not quite as um, well fitted as, say, Bree, for example. Um, Might I speak with you a moment? I've got a quest to talk to somebody again. Why are we going... Okay, it's just the pig quest pointing me in that direction. Pigs are everywhere. I need to worry too much about that. So we're going to go eastwards across Staddle, because Staddle is quite a spread out town. I'll bring up the map. Yeah, Staddle's all the way over here. It spreads quite far to the east. Um, but there are farming places. Which are these fields here. And over here we have Gammy Boggs. Who is an elder hobbit lady. Good day. 
There we go. Could I take a moment of your time? Again, I'm just skipping all the reading of quest text, because if I read quest text, especially in a funny accent, then it's just going to take forever to do these videos. Um, and I've seen them all before, so it's nothing new to me, but I do recommend you uh, read the quest text, at least the first time you do them, because they can be quite fun and interesting. Let's got to talk to Falco Greenhand. There's a lot of running around in Staddle as well. Um, Hello there. Hello. And he's going to send us back to Gammy Boggs. And she's probably going to send us back to the town. And if she does send me back to the town, I'm not going back to the town just yet because I can't be bothered to run around quite that much. How do you do? Good day. Talk to the Staddle folk. With you? Well, I'm not going over that way. I shall go eastwards. Not quite across the plain, though. Across the farming field. Uh, Lily Underhill. I think Guard Fox Love is cute for a man of Bree. Don't tell him I said so. What do you need? Um, who else have we got? I think we technically should speak to Gammy Boggs again because she's going to send us back eastwards. Damn you, Gammy Boggs! Oh, they should get her a mobility scooter. She can do these quests on her own then. Good day. Hello there. Might I speak there with go. you a moment? Um, mind you, old people mobility scooters—they're dangerous. You know, you, there's all these uh. People saying that, oh yeah, youngsters drive around, they're unsafe, they're doing all these road racing. But what about the old people on the pavements in their mobility scooters? Just a moment. They're lethal. They just run you over as you're coming out of the shops or whatever. Anyway, I, I digress from the, the subject of Lotto. Dogwart Shed. I swear that never used to be there. Where's this go? We're in a hobbit hole. I don't remember this being it. I'm pretty sure I, even I wouldn't have missed this after God knows how many characters I've quested through here with. Um, Grobo Dogwart's home. A bit more wood. And we should have a guy to talk to around here. Eldo Swatmidge. And his dog, Juanetta. And there's some branches in the background, which I'm going to have to oh. get. Oh, whoa, it's me. And he's upset that the other gentleman's dog is sick, so uh, we're going to have to get some Might seeds. Might I trouble you for some help? To make some kind of remedy potion to heal his friend's dog. Uh, there's copper over there, so here we go. We're starting the chain reaction of going walkies to get craft nodes. Uh, what have we got to do? Asphodel Froghorn. She's just over there. Um, Lily's secret is to collect red lilies. That's just south of where we are. Uh, Constable Bulger. Oh, he's, he's near here as well. Um, so we're still technically in saddle at the minute. We're just running backwards and forwards. There we go. Stay and have some tea. Collect some weed. Yeah, Hobbit drug dealers. The little gangsters of Middle Earth. Okay, so we just need one of those. Do a little bit of drugs running back to Asphodel. Every week I bring my produce to the town square to sell. I get enough coin to get by. Well, if you're selling drugs, yeah, I imagine it's probably quite lucrative. How do you do? Um, so yeah, that Eldo Swatmage character has got the hots for this widow lady. But uh, he's too afraid to say it. Which is why he's sending us to do his dirty work. To try and impress her. Constable Bulger. Just a 
Just a moment. And that end. Please stay a moment. There's been some stolen pipe weed, which I believe is to the south in the ruins. Uh, we need to kill a few of these pigs. Bang. Pigs can be found pretty much everywhere south of Staddle. Oh god, I've got another deed. There we go, one dead pig. We've got some branches. I don't even have my mining skill turned on. I should probably turn it on. Um, another pig. That one's yellow because he's a level above me. It'll still be uh, pretty easy. Two. And there's a red lily. Now these red lilies will be everywhere in uh, these woods that are just south of Staddle. So we need to keep our eyes open for six of those. Alright, next. Bang. Is there any more lilies around here? There's one. Right next to me, I didn't even see it. That's two. Another pig. Can't see any over that way. Five boars. Any more around here? Can't see any. Let's kill another pig while we wait. Right, there's two over there in the background. Kill that pig as well because he's in the way. <laughs> there's an angry bear behind me. There we go. Um, these, these bears are threatening to attack so I can just run away because I can't be bothered to fight them. Um, but as well as them roaring, you can see in the chat log, Foraging Brown Bear threatens to attack. So if you're playing with the sounds off, you still have a, a fair chance of knowing what the hell is going on. Um, this is five, that will be six, and then we just need to kill three more piggies. Heavy rowan branches, there we go, I was talking about those. I think it was in the last video that uh, the branches are usually have heavy in front of their name if they're going to give a bit more. So that one gave me five. Um, I think the heavy nodes and the rituals tend to be between four and six of whatever they normally drop, whereas the normal ones tend to be between one and three on average. But as far as we're concerned, every crafting node is still valid, so we're going to pick up everything we see. Uh, that's eight. This will be nine. And uh, which lucky piggy is going to get turned into bacon after this? Probably that one. Spear him! Skewer him like a boar, because he is a boar. So that's done. We can run up the hill. Uh, get rid of that. Stolen pipe weed. I'm pretty sure that's far to the south. Um, but then again, maybe we should probably do that. Let's do that then. Um, so yeah, there's going to be a ruins south of this wood. Let's see if we can find it on the map. Over there in the U of Chetwood South. Um, and you should be able to access it via the east and western ends. However, there is a shortcut. Which I will take because it will probably lend me, uh, lend me right in the middle of where I need to be. 
of her branches. For some reason, a very angular texture on the uh, the tree there. Um, but yeah, there, there'll be one entrance over there, and there's one over there. But because we're a sneaky hobbit, we're gonna jump the wall. Um, I think it's here. Yeah, there we go. Ha ha! You weren't expecting that, were you, brigands? There's a gentleman over there. Ah, uh, there we go. There's the barrel of stolen pipe weed that we need. Ha! You're a waste of my time. I'm not. You're running away from me. Spear! It's a javelin. I keep saying spear. Spear sounds cooler. There we go. Barrel of pipe weed. More drugs for our drugs operation. Um, oh, brigand. Bang! Yeah, he got murdered. Um, so three of those are hand-ins. Actually, four of those are hand-ins. It just doesn't have a tick on it. Um, so, if I remove the quest guide focus, that will now point to the nearest one. Which is going to be Lily again. So, just need to run up the hill. And because I've taken my hands off the keyboard, I will tell you about the auto run button, which is numlock. And if you press numlock, which not necessarily is to turn it on, because it's not necessarily synced with Windows, but if you press numlock, you will auto run and you don't have to hold down the forwards button. So you can uh, go AFK or give your fingers a rest while you run up hills and stuff like this. Um, and that will keep on going until you press like a one of the movement buttons. Although you can use the mouse to turn where you're facing as well while you're auto running. Nearly there. I believe Lily will send us back to Gammy, and then Gammy is probably going to send us to somebody else. And ah, it's going to drive us mad. Right there we go. Right, and there's. Must ignore the ore nodes. What do you need? Ignore the ore nodes. You didn't see them, Bell. Um, let's talk to Gammy Boggs, and then probably go to Falco Greenhand. How do you do? Uh, I wanted to select a quest reward. Well, I can't use a great sword as a warden. That's uh, more for like uh, captains and champions. Um, the boots are light armor, even though they do offer more armor, so I'm not going to use that on principle. Um, but I'll still get them anyway. Could I take a moment oh. of your time? And yep, it is indeed talk to Falco Greenhand. You can tell I've done these quests too many times. And Falco's over here. We're gonna talk to Falco. And then he's gonna give us fixing Falco's folly. My poor, poor garden. Good day. I had to talk to Gon uh, Constable Bulger first. Okay. Um, we'll talk to the, him in a bit. We need to go back into town. Uh, we've got f all three of these here, aren't they? Yeah. So we've got him not grouse the grocer. Give you a quest, you'll probably give well, me another one, won't you? Some folk. Yep. Might I speak with you a moment? You may not speak with me for a moment. I'm grabbing that quest and I'm running. Uh Constable Tangle Rush. How can I be of service? Will give me a spear, which is better. Um and it gives me a bit of agility, which is kind of good for a warden. Their their damage scales off agility. Um but as they are a tank class, vitality's more useful for tanking, but agility is useful for doing damage, so horses for courses. Um, but I'll take that spear and I will equip it. Um, didn't we have. Oh, Eldo Swapmage is the last one. Um, but while I'm in town, I'm going to speak to a vendor and just sell my stuff. Um, and I have covered Quit that in a previous episode, so what you want. I won't bore you too much for those. But I will just sell all my rubbish. 
and keep the crafting materials because I can make use of those. Didn't I equip that? Oh no, that's the worst one, okay. Um, now something I've noted is that we do have some craft uh, scrolls which we've found we've looted uh, on various men and monsters that we've killed and conveniently they are tailor scrolls and you see that they're apprentice tailor scrolls as well so if I click those it will consume the scroll and give me a recipe and these recipes you can uh, consume them and the recipe will be destroyed but it will put your recipes in your crafting panel so you only have to learn each recipe once um, although there are some recipes which are single use so you can only craft one item and then they'll be destroyed and need to be relearned again uh, so if I just stand still and learn these and they will pop up somewhere in the tailor panel there we go a heavy cloth cloak uh, which is probably going to be a higher level yeah level 10 for that one but it gives us max morale that'd be quite nice but um, every tier of crafting that you will get, you will get the, the lowest level tier of recipes uh, for free once you unlock that. So for Apprentice tier it's the level 7 stuff. But then uh, from various recipes and things that you find in the world you can get extra bits. So level 10 stuff and possibly level 12 I think for Apprentice stuff. I know they did change the early level crafting around a bit. Um, I'm sorry, my thoughts were elsewhere. I hope it's not a bother. So now we've got a May quest to kill bears. Uh, oh, copper as well. And we've got a quest up here, which is an orange quest, which is to kill some uh, tough guys on this hill, just north of Staddle. I might as well kill these guys while I'm not too far from them. Uh, Blackwood Thieves, Nought of Free, and Advance Waifman. So I think these guys are signatures, aren't they? Yeah. They're a bit tougher than the average mob. And there's Advance Waifman in the background, and he's orange, so he's going to be a bit tougher. He's dead. Um, now those two guys are a bit close together. If, if you shoot somebody and get them into combat, they will aggro any of their friends that are nearby them if they're close enough. So that might pull him as well. Yep, that made him angry as well because he was too close to the one we hit. Uh, which is probably not the best of stuff given that these are kind of tough enough as it is. Um, I may need to chicken out at some point. Probably have some health pots somewhere. I do. There they are. Let's see him now. There we go. Click that to use the health pot. Oh, if only I had some of my advanced walking skills, this would be laughably easy trying to solo anything in the game. Um, God, oh God, no! First bear! Oof! I will outlive you. Come on, come on. Still counts. Still counts. There we go. Good girl. Um, have you got anything interesting on your corpse? You've got a recipe. That'll come in handy. But uh, I don't think I've actually mentioned, but your your health and your power will regenerate while you're out of combat. And it does also regenerate while you're in combat as well, but uh, at a much lower speed. So I'll just wait for it to get a little bit higher. There we go. Missed, and it made him angry. Oh, 
Oh, he's knocked me down. Damn you! Kick him in the nuts! There we go. Coward. One more. There we go. <laughs> oh! There's one on the left that we nearly walked into. I don't need to fight any more, so... I'd rather not have to fight him. Um, oh, craft note, tin deposit, it cannot be ignored. That copper one can, though. There we go. Um, what do we got to do? Talk to Constable Bulger next. Boing. And that's his house down there, just on the edge of the woods. What about tin? Oh my god, I'm finding so much tin. It's a rich tin, Jesus Christ. Oh, I keep telling you how rare tin is, and then all I find in the videos is like tin. But honestly, it is, is normally quite hard to find. Um, so we talk to him. Hello. He says, protect him while repelling the brigand attack. And there's going to be loads of brigands coming from over there somewhere. Okay, between those two trees. Nearly got it right. Um, bang. Now, you might find this quest a bit tough on your own. Uh, depending on what level you are and what class you are. But this is normally uh, something that people need a bit of help with. Particularly if it's their first character in the game and they're still learning the game in general, as well as their class. Um, just pray for these guys to come, but there's going to be three waves of three people. Uh, Constable Bulger himself will fight. As you'll see, I've got some health items for Constable Bulger. And he's taking a bit of a battering, if I'm honest. He was nearly in the trouble there. That's, it's, it's probably best to fight them away from Constable Bulger so he doesn't actually start fighting people. Um, I should easily be able to take out these three guys on my own now. Easily. Oh, tin! My god, there's more tin. Bit. What? Parried? No. Stop cheating. There we go. Screw the crest handling. Always things down there as well. I want that tin. Probably gonna have like a stupid amount of tin compared to copper, aren't I? Um. Twenty-four chunks of tin. Two tinks of chunks of bound of tin. That must be a, a quest reward or something. So I've got 28 bits of tin compared to well, 26 bits of copper. It's not too bad the out sink. Um, what have I got to do? Defeat bears. Bears are near here. But yeah, usually um, the rare ores and stuff is usually outnumbered about two to one by the common ones, at least. But uh, the way the uh, the craft nodes work is that, for example, for the uh, the apprentice tier ores, they can either spawn as copper or tin, and those nodes will always spawn in the same place. But once they respawn, they could either spawn copper or tin and there will be a certain percent chance for each. So let's say it's 66% chance to be a copper and a third chance to be uh, the tin, for example. Um, but then if people go around mining all the tin, odds are it's going to respawn as copper. And if people keep mining the tin but not mining the copper, then tin will become extremely rare. And that's usually 
the problem that happens with people mining the rare ores. Um, bears, where are you? As a bear. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're mining something, just take everything. You're not losing anything. Uh, and if you're after the rare bits, it helps you. It helps everyone else because more rare stuff will respawn. Two bears, copper deposit. Another bear over there. Three down, come on. Fox! Kill the fox! Whoosh! Splat. Um. God, where have all the bears gone? But yeah, they, the mobs work on a similar principle that there'll be certain points where a monster can spawn. And depending on where it is, it could, for example, in this case, it could either spawn a bear or it could spawn a boar. At the minute, they seem to be mostly boars. Come on, we two more bears. There's one bear. Homing on that bear. Oh, there's somebody on a horse riding past really fast. Esmond Oakheart something something. There we go, there's a second bear. Six six, wonderful, we can go back to town now. And I'm really missing my uh, my horse to be able to run around a lot quicker than we are at the minute. Um, Asphodel Froghorn. That's slightly north of where we are. Is it only those three quests we need to do? Not including these ones in the marshes. Um, it is, apart from the ones going to Bree, but that's even later. I mean, that's a level 8 quest to go into Bree, but... Going into Bree and coming out the other side, it's kind of more level 15-ish. Um, but you can pretty much go almost everywhere in Middle-earth, regardless of your level. It's just generally a very bad idea, because things will murder you um, if they're much higher level. Do? Do, do, do. I know my quest thing is sending me left, but we need to talk to uh, this lovesick puppy over here and his dog. There's copper, there's another copper. I'm not going to run out of my way to get the other one, but this one's not too far out of the way. Um, Rowan branches! Oh, woe is me. Where is me? The old lady doesn't like me. Um, Might I trouble you for some help? There we go. Now he, now he wants me to help the old lady take her market produce to, to town to sell in the market. <laughs> so now we run back to Asphodel Froghorn. We uh, collect her drugs and try to sell them. And then we talk to Hypnot Grass in Staddle, who's the grocer, and Falco Greenhand, which is on the way. Squirrel! Murder! There we go. As you'll notice, we don't get any loot for killing those guys. It's just funny. Um, so there we go. We've got a basket of vegetables, which we need to take into town. Oh, 
nice bit of scenery over there. The hills of Southern Breeland. Um, my poor a poor garden. Day, isn't it? Ding. Have some tea. There we go. Fixing Falco's folly. I told you that was the next quest he gives us. Defeat Jasper Mudbottom. There he is far to the south in the brigand camp. Um, but that is technically marked as a fellowship quest. But you can tell that by on your quest log if it's got this red, blue, and yellow icon thing. Um, that means fellowship, which normally means six people, a big group, basically. Um, so, for instance, it definitely means six people, but for everything else, it just means a big group. But it's not that hard, this particular quest. Um, and there are also other icons. So, for example, a ring icon means it's an epic quest. Uh, and that's the only ones we've got at the minute, but there are other quests for indicating if it's a raid-sized group for like 12 or more people, or a small fellowship, which is intended for about three people. Um, but I'll point those out when we come across them. So for now, hand in Can those two quests. Be left alone? He wants How us to leave rude. him alone. How rude! Um, Earring of the Vigil. Mm, I prefer... Th Vitality over the fate, even though it's one more point. Um, we don't want swords. The boots are medium armor. 37 over 3. That's a lot better than what we've got, so I'll take that. And equip. And once again, it's back to Asphodel Froghorn. I told you Saddle would be involving a lot of running around. Um, and our bags are getting pretty full of rubbish. But uh, if you start out as free to play, then you only get two, what was it, three bags by default. I think it, I think it's free, um, but then you can buy bags four, five, and six, if and when you need them. Um, but these days, when you've got the, the pending loot, which can hold 50 items for up to an hour, then it's not, it's not too, uh, much of a rush to get stuff in your bags because all the, uh, the trash items like these purple backgrounds we can pretty much ignore because we don't really care too much if we lose those and just take the important stuff like the hides out and put them in our bags um, how do you do oh, to choose one could I take a moment of and your he sends time? me to well do swap midge please don't be a tin because I have to go get you copper tin diversion God, so much tin, this is crazy. <laughs> Boing. Um, because that's in the way, we have to get that copper as well. And Rowan! Goodness gracious. One day there'll probably be an episode where I'm trying to do something very specific and then I spend the entire episode just going wandering around collecting craft nodes. Because there's always just one more, just out of sight. Uh, rich copper there, so that's giving me a bit extra. And what are you going to do, sir? When I tell the wedge... Oh, whoa, it's me. Because the, uh, the old lady wants him to get rid of the dog if he's, if he's going to go out of her. And he's like, what? No, I can't get rid of my dog. I love my dog. wood and then we go back and tell her well as much as he would love to go out of you he's not getting rid of the dog there's a line and he's not going to cross it loot those shoot the deer up the bum And then she's like, whoa, I can uh, respect that. I guess I'll just live with the dog then. And we go tell him, look, you're in there. Enjoy your new girlfriend. Even though she's allergic to your dog. 
So I even know that I even know the quest text, like the back of my hand. Um, oh, whoa, it's me. What do you mean, woe is you? We've just hooked you up with the lady. Um, so we've got some items for matching up those two hobbits. Lover's mantle, lover's helm, lover's shield. Well, I could use a shield, but it's a light shield. And that's meant for uh, minstrels and, to a lesser extent, captains, if they're inclined to use a shield. Um, lover's helm, it's medium armour, but it's got will on it. It's the same armour what we've got, so I think we'll stick with the crafted one. And that's got less armour, so none of those we're going to use, but we'll take it anyway. And we have got a new deed which is just completed, which is Breland Adventure Advanced, which is the second tier of that. And we needed to complete 30 quests for that. And that's going to be charity, so we can slot that next time we go to Avald and get a bit more extra stats. But um, for now, I think that's probably a good place to stop because uh, I need a break from all this running around in saddle. There's another good view over there of the Midgewater Marshes. Uh, we may end up there in the next episode, I'm not sure. But uh, for now, that'll be all, so see you next episode. Bye.